benches, including the TL, uh, the GW mentioned. So, um, all right, so we were all this, uh, so uh, actually, so the military courts, the, 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 the uh, validity of uh, military courts is uh, through the fact that their convictions are not carried out completely. They are also reviewed by the APEX court before the, those are carried out and those stays are often uh, taken at that. Only 12 were done. Uh, ATA overhaul required. Section 7.2.3 of EAA, Pakistani Act, allows for review of military court decisions by relevant court authorities. And there are a lot of suggestions that we would like to give to uh, the... Um, Thank you very much. So the criteria for selection made for them or related to the Jack, punch, which is good state and uh, and after jurisdiction can stay with Alright, alright, Does somebody record that? qualifications 
judicial law case. Any method of judicial selection shall safeguard any judi against judicial appointments for improper motives. Now my question over here is, how can we be sure that on one side our fundamental rights are taken away, at the expense of what? Unqualified officers who are not professional judges and who test our fate by granting one of the most and severe or greatest punishments to that sentence. Right? Another thing um, is the trials are taken in, uh, they take place in secret. Nobody knows about it. It's, it's not open to public. That is not, that's not fair, is it? Okay, there is no right to appeal in civilian courts. Only there's the review available to the Supreme Court, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, they are not, military courts, the, the trials are not transparent. There is no detailed written judgment at the conclusion of the trial. So you don't get any, for example, there is a death sentence, you don't know anything about, about it. It's just uh, through ISTR uh, that what is the death sentence has been granted. There is a higher uh, than 90% confession rate. Now that is very scary. By December 2016, according to the ISPR's press statement, 135 out of 144 people convicted in military courts had confessed to their crimes. Now that is too much, isn't it? Over here, the ICG even notes that suspects tried by military courts remain in military custody at all times. Even after the magistrate records their confessions, they also have no access to the outside world, further compounding their vulnerability not only to torture and ill treatment, but also to other forms of external pressure and coercion. Just as I said earlier, ISPR is the only source of information for any military trials. Now, another um, point I would say is trying of minors retrospectively. In August 2009, a uh, case by a child, I would say, by the name of Helen, really was arrested by military authorities. And for six years, the 10th grader's family was unaware of his whereabouts. He was, oh, he was reportedly um, 14 years old at that time of arrest and was discovered through an ISPR press release that Heather had been sentenced to death. Now, his involvement in committing heinous offenses related to terrorism had been ascertained by the military prosecutors. My question again, how many war cases the life of Heather Ali, who was a minor, will be left to the fate of the unqualified officers when it comes to being in their legal capacity, which is not even the judges or any legal knowledge as per se. Uh, there are a lot of international concerns regarding um, the military courts being, the jurisdiction, jurisdiction being uh, um, expanded to the civil, civilians. Uh, they have said in their report uh, in 2016, the International um, Commission of Jurists, they said, I quote, that the government and military authorities have failed to make public information about the time and place of their trials, the specific charges and evidence against the convicts, as well as the judgment of military courts including essential findings, legal reasonings, and evidence on which the convictions were based. And further on, it goes on to state that human rights organizations, trial monitors, journalists, and even family members of the accused persons tried by military courts have been denied access to military court proceedings. I don't understand why not. At least to the family members, we can say, you know, that's just Another thing I want to add here, there is a question here, is this how we want to be seen in international community, considering our eagerness of becoming a part of the United Nations General Assembly? I'm sure not. ICG, ICJ urges Pakistan to please go back to the system of military justice, to undertake a comprehensive review of its counterterrorism laws, reinstate a moratorium on the death penalty. And that's very important to move towards abolishing it. There are concerns about torture and ill treatment and enforced disappearances. The absolute right of all persons to be free from torture and other ill treatments in the circumstances is, is affirmed in a number of international human rights instruments, including two treaties to which Pakistan is a party, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights 
and the Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman, or Degrading Treatment or Punishment. See it in Article 15 of the CAT and 14 of the Pakistan's Constitution expressly prohibit statements made as a result of torture to be invoked as evidence in any proceeding. Um, this is just, uh, do I have time? Uh, okay, it's just a small statistic. It says according to the ISPR, at least 78 of the, this you guys have to listen, 78 out of 88, 81 people convicted by military courts have allegedly admitted to their involvement in terrorism before a magistrate during their trials. Now the secrecy that, that surrounds military courts proceedings raises questions about these confessions and admissions made by the convicts, especially in the light of widespread torture and ill treatments in detention in Pakistan, particularly those in custody of the military. Furthermore, I would like to add here as well that Pakistan is the only country in South Asia to allow the military to try civilians. Another landmark, isn't it, by Pakistan. Alternatives uh, to strengthening the existing system, I would say that Pakistan must not sacrifice the core rule of law. Uh, principles and deny the rights of accused persons in the name of speedy trials. They should strengthen the police capacity of investigation, improve the training of prosecutors uh, for terrorism-related cases, and ensure protection of judges, prosecutors, and witnesses. Yes, 28th Amendment has uh, uh, been implemented, and but I would really like to add, it is the bare minimum requirement of a so-called democratic and free country. Does this do you think, does this mean an accused person can expect a fair and transparent trial because of a military tribunal? Because of a military tribunal before a military tribunal? I don't think so. And what will be the extent of its practical implementation? We don't know yet. It's just being implemented. We don't know. And I am not too sure about it, honestly. Um, and what about Pakistan's latest compromise? Uh, okay. I would just like to end it with uh, Mr. Muhammad Ali Jinnah's uh, quotation. Um, and we should definitely keep this in mind, that democracy is in the blood of Muslims who look upon complete equality of mankind and believe in fraternity, equality, and liberty. And thank you, everybody.
uh, in 15 last 15 years there has been no death penalty by Pakistani by the civilian courts. It is because Pakistan has signed all those international conventions. In, in, in which Pakistan is under an obligation that do not do not that respect the human rights. As it has been mentioned in ICCPR, ICSCR, and inter international convention on the pro inhuman and degrading pro treatment. So the Pakistan government signed that optional protocol in which the prohibition of death penalty, but Pakistan is under an obligation to respect that international international obligation. And secondly, my point is that due to these military courts, military courts as has been cited by our opponent, opponent, uh, opponent lawyer of the India, Harish Sal, we repeatedly criticized Pakistan's reputation and international level that the Pakistan is the only country in the South Asia and whole region which will be trying their civilians in those military courts. Secondly, as the, the next point which has been cited by Mr. Asir that military that the military courts trying hardcore terrorists, only hardcore terrorists. That's, that's not the case over here. Military courts are trying the civilians and civilians and the civil they and they trying the civilians and the designation is given to those as a hardcore terrorist. So that's the case. Secondly, 75% acquittal rate. We are not here to to defend to defend the civilian courts. We are here to 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 propose the another alternative solution, not just as the military court. As and 28 amendment changes and as another 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 reference cited by the 28th amendment, which has witness are not secured. Witnesses are not secured in an ordinary court, which has been cited by the Mr. Uh, Mr. Asif and in military courts, the, the level of the, uh, the evidence, the only evidence provided by the military personnel are the confessions. Ninety percent of the confession rate. This, this, uh, this leads to the, this leads to the situation that how, how every terrorist is, you know, accepting that he is a terrorist and we hang him and uh, and this kind of situation in this kind of situation. And second, Mr. Umar. Mr. Umar said that the reason of a high rate of equator, that's why military courts are created. So it means that the other fundamental rights are derogated and other fundamental are derogated and this situation judiciary is failed to do so. So that's the only solution. It, 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 it's not the case over here. As Justice Costa said in his in his dissenting opinion on, on, on the judgment for our Pindi Bar Association versus versus others, in which they said that this is the the military courts are the and knee jerk and that's violate that, that's the only a shortcut solution of this case and this is Mr. Omar said that this is the only practical situation how the military courts is only the practical solution solution that's not and and balancing and he said about the balancing right rights of individual in the military court military courts uh, violates the international obligation of Pakistan under ICCPR, ICSCR and fundamental rights which has been mentioned in our constitution like first right which has been violated in right to life in the military court article 6 of ICCPR article 3 article 3 of UDHR which refers that which refers and second right which has been violated in the military courts that is right to fair trial and due process due process has been mentioned in article 14 of the ICCPR and, and right to liberty that that what that is also been violated in, in the military courts in the military courts like uh, the example have been cited as in ICJ report in which said that the, the student of the Islamic International University, University has been arrested and may have been taken to the dream center and after a year I see I, uh, ISPR released the report that that man has been uh, that has given death penalty in death penalty. So, so these are the example which leads towards the question mark how military court is taking place taking the justice to the civilians. And another example can be cited like Adiala 11 case, which violated the reputation of Pakistan in all over the in all over the world, like Amnesty International and other human right human right human right human right organizations were. 
but criticized in Pakistan on international level that how Pakistan, uh, how the justice system is Pakistan. And second is prohibition of torture, which is an absolute right, cannot be derogated in any situation. But in military courts, the confession rate suggested that there has been the, the right of the torture has been violated and violated in in those in those cases. And secondly, we refer that international human rights apply during the peacetime and conflict, and state should not adopt international human rights. And state should adopt international human rights treaties and incorporate in it in their domestic legislation. This means that Pakistan should incorporate all those international obligations in their domestic legislation. And if we have a constitution suggesting that by 18th amendment that does not validate the military code. And lastly, the Umar said the Liaquat Hussain judgment. The Liaquat Hussain judgment is wrongly cited by the uh, as per as per my knowledge, this is wrongly cited by the owner that the Yalta Hussain judgment military court were validated by the Supreme Court. That's not the case. In when ATA was created, ATA, ATA was created in this judgment. Supreme Court were Supreme Court were not allowed that the military and military and judiciary should work together. So they said that the in this judgment it has been referred that the uh, independence of the judiciary should be there and military persons are not allowed to work with the uh, to work with the judiciary so as the independence of the judiciary has been also referred for, uh, referred by the supreme court in the supreme court in the al jihad trust al jihad trust <laughs> is 
actually, if actually, if we see the global definition of terrorism, terrorism is mean that any crime, any act, any act which is intended to uh, attempt or commit on the basis of ideology, your philosophy, your religion, your ethnic, or your sectarian. This is the simple definition of terrorism. What we are facing in Pakistan still, we are not defining terrorism by our judiciary uh, as fair to define terrorism. What is terrorism? And we are promulgating anti-terrorism law, etc., etc. in Pakistan that we say a state military court are fair or criminal justice system. We, what we are facing, to be very honest, no world, South Asia, and uh, what no one is facing in, in, in the world. Second, for the counter solution, I uh, uh, opponent raised this question for the counter, for the short term so solution. We, as a democratic, as a democratic country, as a democratic cons constitution, as a as a prestigious constitution, we are not in favor of the establishment of military court in our uh, for our for our, for our law. But in short term, it is a it is a what we call it. It needs a time. It, to be extend the jurisdiction of military court, but if, uh, in, in 2002, after the met of APSA, APS, it was, was established for the two years. It was an opportunity, it was a golden opportunity for our criminal justice system to bring reform in our criminal justice system. But therefore, again, Senate of Pakistan ex extended this jurisdiction of the military court. What is this? Of course, criminal justice system, military justice system will require. It is the necessary, it is the need of time. It is for our security challenges, for our security, for our security, for the fulfillment of, uh, to justify ourselves morally to international community. Yes, we are, Wasama bin Laden and Mullah Muhammad, these are not the product of Pakistan. And this is the time to show integrity with military and this this what, what we call so called this uh, civilian justice system. And again I want to legal point I want to raise here. It is not legal this military court is not what something that is unconstitutional. This is constitutional under the cover of constitution that was created by the representative of people in Pakistan, they were created this military court. This is not un something unconstitutional. And our opponents, again, the right and liberty, they are consistently repeating right and liberty of the individual. This is what? Right and liberty and international reputation is. It's not more than our security challenges in Pakistan. And not more than our security. If we talk about the, uh, some state in Pakistan, unfortunately, in last from 2007 till today, 1,924 people acquitted from this different court, and 724 people again these terrorists rejoin their respective organizations by the anti by the anti-terrorism court in this court, no, this court, and. Mr. Tahir was talking about the preamble that we are only the one country in South Asia that we what we uh, that we uh, the, what what we call that we exported the basic structure of our constitution. No, basic structure of constitution what is discussed in India and also discussed in the uh, uh, the, uh, the judgment of Bar Rawalpindi Bar Association. And, uh, versus the Federation of Pakistan. What basic structure of the constitution, if we talk about the basic constitution of preamble, that pre preamble is not what we alternated by military court amendment 21st amendment of the constitution. And again the same judgment, again in the same judgment that is quoted, uh, uh, um, uh, that, uh, and just, Justice Atta Bandiyali stated that, and I quote it, it is a quite clear that, it is a quite clear that the procedure 
is applicable for the trial by the military court is not something it is not something against the prescribed judicial system of the pakistan or settled the judicial system of the pakistan it is settled principle that is and i quoted by at the end short end of time i want to wind up yes 21st amendment is established and promulgated by our by the representative of people yes we are in the state of war and 21st amendment is we extraordinary situation for the to threat our security of the country we need to establish criminal justice